couple of items to add to your report that was included in your packet. Um, the, the first item I wanted to let you know about is the Barbara Country Club's water service. There will be a water shutoff tonight for residents and business at the Barbara Country Club. The shutoff is going to happen at 10 p.m. and the water will be back on at 6 a.m. This um, shutdown is so that we can um, bypass our water line that is underneath the Orchard Road Bridge. This is part of our USDA water treatment plant upgrade. And the water will be shut off. The new um, bypass line will be energized and the water will be turned back on. The um, residents were issued a door knobber which told them what was going on. It was also in both the Hopeful Tribune and the ID Press. They were also given information on what they, they can do and if the water is not back on, who to contact, and also if the water is, is um, cloudy or any way um, they were concerned about the water quality. Um, staff does not feel there will be any issues with water quality, that there is a valve there that should really assist us in making a clean and smooth transition. Additionally, the fire department has um, the county on notice and they have also noticed our dispatch center and they will also have an additional crew on duty tonight. So we believe we have our bases covered on this um, water outage um, again from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Um, the um, ad hoc committee for the trash contract is meeting next Monday at 10 a.m. and then that is um, with Councilmember Britson and Councilmember Padilla. So we have been putting some um, time into gathering other requests for proposals and other contracts so that we can take some time to review those and again that's next Monday. The state of the, the county address is Wednesday. Excuse me, Laura. When, uh, I thought that was tomorrow morning. It's tomorrow morning? Okay. Yes. And I'll be there. Monday's project review. Monday's project review. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, project review committee is Monday at 10, and tomorrow at 10 is the ad hoc committee. Okay. Um, let, me, let me see if I got these straight. Let me double check me. The um, state of the county address is Wednesday at San Diego State University, Plexico, Rodney Auditorium at 7 p.m. The League of California Cities Dinner is on Thursday, and it is at the El Centro Community Center on South 1st Street at 6 p.m. And I believe that Glenn has been getting RSVPs from all of you to see if you will be able to attend. So if there's a change or you want to join us, please I'll let Glenn know this evening. And then the ICTC meeting and our LTA meeting, which Councilmember Bradshaw serves on those boards, um, is Monday 1st, and that is at 6 p.m. at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Um, and then LAFCO is meeting on the 25th, <coughs> and I believe that's at 8.30. There's also a LAFCO workshop scheduled sometime in March, so I'll be bringing that information back to everyone. Um, a couple of other things. Dispatch service was transitioned over to the county. So when you call um, dispatch, when you call 911, the county is answering. When you call the 2991 number, the county is also answering. So we've got that switched over. Um, the water tank color, we found out that USDA would not pay for the dual color in the water tank. So since it's not a, an eligible cost um, or expense, um, we decided to just do one color. Um, and we're going to do the light color so that it's all painted the lightest color and then we picked a two-tone. And that way, if when we paint the next tank that's been refurbished, our, our, our current existing in-service tank when it's being refurbished, and we determine that we have enough money, um, we can do the bottoms and it'll be a lot easier, a lot a less, less expensive with a darker color. So we're going with the light Palomino you know, tan, um, and that should be started next week. We should be ready to sandblast and get started next week. Um, and I believe that's all I have for you this evening. If, I, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. And council, you have questions for city manager? No, thank you. <coughs> Under new business, 
Discussion related action to adopt resolution 10 12 approving the award of contract for the West Entrance side project. Jerry, future public works manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members of the Council, uh, I'm the Chair of the Road Bill, and uh, through the first ARA funding, we uh, received $50,000 to uh, uh, spruce up the area coming into town with a nice entrance monument sign. And uh, the construction cost is uh, $249,872. Now, the city has set aside $8,000 sent out RFPs, the RFPs were returned, and the bid opening was conducted on February 5th by, uh, and was then reviewed at, by the whole group. Um, so the engineers determined that trademark construction has submitted the lowest responsible proposal and should be awarded the project at that $49,872. Second for discussion. Discussion. Uh, I was under the impression that this had been done some time ago and it was incorporated with what was going on on Hope. No, this is a separate project. Well, the reason I state that is because I asked at the time about the uh, street being widened and uh, how it was going to uh, affect the balance of 9th Street because it will be wider at the at the first block. It'll be widened from Holt to Cedar at the underground of the canal to that point. Okay. Is there further discussion? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there no further discussion? Could we have a roll call vote, please? Bianca Maria. Yes. David Bradshaw? Yes. Richard Bolton? Yes. Jerry Benson? Yes. Nicole Lemon? Yes. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. I, yes. one, I, I meant to bring out to you that um, the city has received another $150,000 of the funds through ARA2, we're calling it, 
uh, to apply to a, that area of town coming in. We're going to hopefully be able to uh, put in some curb and gutter on our street with that area and these other things. We're still working on this scope of work, but uh, still pending whether or not the, the Senate will pass and we get that funding. Sounds like great news. It's in the works. Very great news. Thank you. Number six, discussion related action to adopt resolution 10 11, modifying the city's operating budget for fiscal year 2009 10. Rosa Ramirez, finance manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, that report before you um, uh, is um, detailing the adjustments to the budget for the fiscal year 2009 10. Um, I'll just go over briefly. Uh, the city uh, did hold a budget workshop and recommended these. Um, Changes is customary to stand, uh, in standard procedure that the city performs a minimum budget review. So the city's budgets are in financial position. Um, this review has been completed and staff has validly adopted budget, revenue projections, as well as economic conditions and fitted for the remainder of the fiscal year. It is staff's intent to be a balanced budget in the second half of the fiscal year using the modified budget as a financial planning tool. Um, adjustment, adjustments to the budget are recommended as follows in our detailed. Um, on the back of documentation that we went in detail in the uh, workshop and then the staff report as well. It is staff's recommendation for coming to adopt resolution 1011 with the um, document changes. Okay. Madam Mayor, I would like to table this. I have a preponderance of questions regarding this uh, proposal. We kind of skimmed over it the other night, but we didn't hit it very hard. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry that I was unable to attend that budget meeting, and I have a lot of questions. Um, I need to speak to the city manager uh, in regards to it. I'd like to take a it as well. Do we need a motion to do that? How, how can we do this? Uh, proceed, yeah, it is on your agenda for action tonight. Procedurally, the better practice would be to have a motion um, if you're going to bring it back to the later meeting. Uh, Mr. Attorney, in the past, it's my understanding that if two people want to table it, it's tabled. Um, I, don't, I don't recall that, that um, I, I, don't, I don't recall that that's been a practice of the city. I think there's always been a, a lot of collegiality and consensus. I don't know if that's ever been codified. So I don't, in, in terms of a formal rule of practice, Mr. President, I can't answer that for you. Well, one of the reasons that I feel that I need more information is because of some adjustments that were made after the budget meeting. Is that correct? Um, after the budget meeting, there was one of, um, adjustment that I recall there was a remainder of parks budget the same. There was a decrease in uh, expenditure that we had uh, talked about and then we went in and that uh, what it was originally. Let me clarify yes. what you're asking me. The information that we took to council has not changed. When we brought it to council and made a recommendation that the parks budget be um, reduced, um, council gave direction at that budget workshop that they would prefer it remain in. So the parks budget was not reduced. So the budget you have before you is exactly what we took to council at the budget workshop with the parks budget remaining whole and intact for that temporary employee. So no adjustments have been made that were not brought to you in your, in your, in your budget workshop. If that's, if, uh, and just to kind of rephrase your question, nothing was changed after the budget workshop and the only recommended change by council was in the parks department. Uh, I guess I misread it because I thought that there were several changes. Uh, I have to see. There's several changes to the budget that we're recommending, but nothing that was changed after your workshop. All these things are changed. Uh, and, and, and here, and this, this one. This cover sheet wasn't provided during the workshop. No, you're right. This report, the report page, wasn't provided. No, it couldn't have been provided because that's that's the result of the budget workshop. Right. Is this cover page? 
I'm sorry? This is the result of the budget workshop. So this cover page would be being provided. These, these are the changes that were made during over two hours of the workshop. I don't follow your thinking on that. Well, the, the page that's the report to council page, that was a page that, a uh, report that was generated by staff that summarizes the budget workshop that we have and the changes that staff recommended we make. So your summary here that says discussion and revenues and expenditures, those were all the summary of the changes that staff recommended council approve in your mid-year budget adjustment. Since that mid-year budget adjustment um, meeting, since your budget workshop, um, nothing has been changed. It it's remains the same. I, I'm not disputing that nothing has been changed since the workshop. Okay. What I'm questioning is a lot of the things that's in this budget uh, proposal. Is there a question that I can help answer? I have several questions. Would you, do you want to go through these now, I guess is my question? Well, that was the reason why I would like to table it and we could talk about it at a budget workshop because if, if uh, we're not granted the table, then I'm going to ask all these questions right now. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, your budget process is a, it's kind of a snapshot in time and it's a working document. And, and the reason that. that. And the reason for the mid-year review is to allow you to make those changes um, that either staff recommends or, or generated by council so that your budget accurately reflects what's going on in the financial life of the city. I, and having said that, I don't think there's a, 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 a time frame in getting this done. I mean, I think you need to get your, everybody should have their questions answered and you'd be satisfied by it. I don't know how. how well, I feel that we, do, we should not have another special meeting to have a budget meeting. I, the questions I have, I would like to ask to the city manager who would probably have the a finance manager there, and and this would not be tonight. I don't feel it's appropriate to do this tonight, but it's up to the council, whatever that you decide to do. But I have questions that I would like to ask the city manager, and I would not want to request another budget meeting. I would like to table it and at the next meeting because there is no deadline at the adoption of this budget at this time just to have it at the other meeting and have my questions answered. So, so I guess that the attorney is stating that uh, it should go to a motion. So, all right, so is there a motion to adopt resolution number 10-11, modifying the fiscal year 9-10 budget. Uh, I move we adopt the resolution number 10-11. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Madam Mayor, yes. I still have questions that I would like to have answered before you continue with this vote. All right, could we do that after the... After the vote? Would, would no, I, the no, question would be... Well, could we do that then? Just, that just for clarification about... Yes. Um, what I mentioned about taking a vote is that's certainly a proper way to do it if you want to table it. Um, it obviously, if there's a consensus to table it, you just direct staff to bring it back. That's the, that's the other alternative. Well, if somebody makes a motion to table, I can approve it today, but I'd be fine to vote you know, for tabling it. I move to table it. All right, uh, we can have a third motion for the city manager to bring this budget back. Madam Mayor, I withdraw that motion because there's already a motion on the floor. That can die for lack of a second. Was there a lack of a second? I don't think there was a second for the first one. All right, so the motion dies for lack of a second. No discussion? Yes. No, oh, just that we had the uh, budget workshop. It was over two hours. It was very detailed. All the changes that we asked for were put in. And if we, I don't see a need for another budget workshop. Uh, for sure. If there's any questions that need to be answered, then we ought to be able to answer now for all city and then our city manager. I agree. I'm ready to approve, but I, if somebody wants to table it, it doesn't seem to be a very big problem to me. So. Well, I'd like to move that we have our city manager bring this back or have it at a, our next meeting. 
next meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Let's aye again. Aye. Aye. Mr. Britson, how are you voting? To bring it back or no? To bring it back, yes. All right, three. All right, it goes three to two. Is that correct? I move that we uh, authorize staff to submit the bid proposal for review. And a second. I second, second that. Oh. Go ahead. Yep. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight. Discussion related action to introduce draft ordinance 470 regarding reasonable accommodations and to schedule a public hearing to consider first reading and subsequent adoption. Justine R.C. City Planner. Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Ludwig. In your packet, uh, you have a free order that's entitled Ordinance 470, which is a draft ordinance of reasonable accommodations. Um, this ordinance has um, been in part uh, reviewed by staff and taken before the um, Public Planning Commission for consideration, for introduction and consideration. Um, after their review, it was um, requested that we make the draft uh, publicly available and that the Planning Commission hold the first public hearing. Um, the Planning Commission did hold a public hearing and we heard um, public comments. And there were some questions that were asked by the attendees that were answered. Um, after some discussion, they move forward to um, recommend that City Council move forward on the adoption of this ordinance. Basically, um, the packet provides, um, along with the staff report, the draft ordinance. It provides the housing element goal that um, delineated this objective of the adoption of a reasonable accommodation ordinance and it also provides the regulatory data by which um, all jurisdictions um, are required to adopt a similar ordinance. Basically, uh, for reasonable accommodations, it means that there might be some individuals in our community with disabilities that might need some variances from our adopted standards. And the city should have um, some procedure in place to be able to accommodate them if they so choose in order so that they can have equal housing opportunities as others that um, that do not have any physical impairments. And so basically that's what this ordinance provides for, that somebody feels that the development standards which the city has is including them from fair housing opportunities, that um, their request for a variance from a specific development standard be heard and be considered. The draft ordinance, if you will note, it provides the, uh, it outlines the process and it establishes the review authority um, by the planning commission to be able to um, review their request and uh, provide a determination. It also provides for an appeal in case the applicant is not satisfied with the planning commission's decision. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions as it relates to this. This is quite a bit of information. so. We're just introducing it and um, hopefully be able to schedule a public hearing to do the first reading before the city council and um, again make it publicly um, available for to the public. And so this action would just be to introduce the uh, ordinance at, at for a public hearing. Correct. Council, do you have questions for just a minute? I have one question. 
question. Uh, is this state mandated? Yes, reasonable accommodation ordinance is state mandated. If you'll go uh, back to the um, the last tab, it kind of cites the government code. Okay. It's reference 472. Is that in reference to that? This 470 is in reference to 470. That is correct. Okay. All right. So is there a motion to approve the action to introduce this for the public hearing? Yes, and if you could kindly please uh, give me the date as to when you would like to schedule that public hearing. March 22nd would kind of give us enough time to, to post it in the, in the paper. Yeah. I think that's your, your council meeting date in March, right? It's the same as February, so it's the 8th and the 22nd. We would need at least until the 22nd to get it posted and noticed. Um, I move we adopt um, with it to come back before us on the 22nd of March. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, no. Discussion related action to introduce draft ordinance 472 regarding proposed zoning amendments associated with special needs housing and to schedule a public hearing to consider first reading and subsequent adopt adoption. Justina R. C. C. Planner. Thank you, Mayor Ludwig. Um, in your packet, you also have a green folder entitled Draft Ordinance 472, which is a special needs housing ordinance. And this is a rather um, detailed um, ordinance that would amend the City of Hopewell Zoning Ordinance. So you will find in this packet a staff report that provides the introduction and purpose on how these housing, uh, these changes are a direct result from the 2006-2014 housing element that was already adopted, in which certain policies, goals, and objectives were determined and adopted by the City Council. Um, some issues for, for discussion at that time would continue to be taken into account when drafting of these proposed amendments were um, the building blocks that addressed zoning for emergency shelters and transitional housing. It also addresses um, the development standards that can be imposed on emergency shelters. Um, also addresses farm worker housing law and also the requirements to allow at least in one zone single room occupancy by right. Um, the amendments uh, that are required for compliance were listed in your staff report beginning on page three. It basically provides um, a number of, uh, it, it quotes the section that would be amended and the changes that are being proposed. But basically, you will see that we include definitions for, um, for new matters such as disabled person, emergency shelter, single room occupancy, transitional housing, and reasonable accommodations that again is incorporated by reference. Um, it also identifies each zone that is going to be amended um, with the type of added use by right. I did want to just bring something to your attention. In the back of your packet, you have something that looks like this, just kind of fit there. And um, we were all under the misconception. If you will see on that page, it says that this amendment took place, and this had to do with group homes that it had taken place in June 11 of 2001. But when code publishing, you know, we were looking at this, and the city clerk were looking at this, we found that even though these amendments were incorporated into your zoning code, they were never adopted by ordinance, and therefore they are null and void. So I'm having to like reintroduce them here at this time. Um, I, I did want to point out that unlike the original um, draft that Cotton Bridges had drafted, well, it kind of permitted by right for transitional housing and emergency shelters in all residential zones, including single family. We, we kind of took it out of single family because we felt that the higher density residential were more appropriate for those, those types of uses. 
So, so you will see here, again, beginning on page three, where we limit um, in rural residential the small group homes, and it's not until the um, R3 zone that we start discussing emergency shelters and transitional housing. Um, the only zone that allows by right for those serving um, more than six clients is the multifamily zone. In addition to that, I wanted to point out that um, as we were going through this process, there were two other areas that we felt um, you know, have become, have become issues with planning applications that needed some clarification. Um, we discussed these at length with the Planning Commission, and on page four, you will see which, the, which of those areas it is. One of them that deals with outdoor storage. Currently, since 2000 at least, that's how far I look, I look back, um, outdoor storage in commercial and industrial zones requires masonry walls. Um, there's been much discussion as to whether the Planning Commission should be given the discretionary authority to allow for alternate uh, screen fencing. And here we've incorporated, for your consideration, um, to allow that um, alternate screening at the discretion of the Planning Commission if it includes landscaping. And it would have to go through review through the project committee and uh, the Planning Commission would ultimately make that determination. Um, another area in uh, planning is the light industrial zone. Um, it does not list towing facilities as an outright use. However, it is listed in the heavy industrial zone as an outright allowed use. We do not have any heavy manufacturing zones inside to incorporate city limits. So we just clarified that if a towing facility wanted to locate in this light industrial zone within the incorporated city limits, it would need a conditional use permit. In other words, it's not listed as allowed or it's not allowed right now. If it's not there um, by default, it's not allowed. But in this case, we're just clarifying that if they have a conditional use permit and go through the process that they may be allowed to have a towing facility in the light industrial zone. And um, this, all of these did go through for consideration of the Planning Commission and they are recommending um, the changes as proposed. Um, I really, I mean, we could go through the ordinance. It's, it's quite detailed. What we did is we took the Hopewell Zoning Ordinance and we actually redlined the applicable sections. So um, there, there are, in addition to the changes of the allowed uses, there are additional development standards that emergency shelters would be subject to. Um, otherwise, in every single zone, the allowed uses would be subject to the same standards of that zone as adopted already. Um, other than that, again, we include the regulatory data that applies to these particular areas, and I'm more than happy to answer <coughs> any questions at this time that you may have. This is, you know, to introduce it to you and allow you enough time to review it before we have our first public hearing. All right, Council, we have questions for Justina. No questions, is that correct? I guess there's no questions. Is there a motion for action? to draft ordinance 472 regarding the zoning amendments and to schedule a public hearing. You're deciding on March 22nd? Is that what? That's the schedule, the schedule of a public hearing date for March 22nd. Right. That public hearing would have for the first reading, and so it would require a subsequent meeting to adopt the ordinance. Okay. But tonight, this, this action is to for this proposal. To schedule a public hearing for March 22nd. Your motion. I'll move that we schedule a public hearing for the draft ordinance 472 with the proposed changes enclosed. For March 22nd. For March 22nd. Second. Second. Uh, okay, this is a, is this a roll call vote? No. No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. March 22nd. We're on. I've never 
10, discussion related action to authorize submittal of an application to statewide park development and community revitalization program of 2008 via adoption of resolution 10-14. Fisher City Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this application that we would be um, considering this evening is um, <coughs> Here, is a um, grant application through um, the statewide park development community revitalization program and it would be for um, the skate park project and the grant application would be over on 4th Street. Now just kind of summarize why we are even considering applying for this grant application. As you know, the council has taken um, several actions regarding the skate park to, um, to build a skate park at the, at the tennis court. We've looked at several um, uh, project scopes for that location and have actually moved forward with um, core samples and moving forward with the construction of it at that location. However, after our budget workshop, um, we realize that if the public safety building comes in at, a, at the cost estimate that we had what, about eight, nine months ago, there would be very little, if any, money left over for the skate park. So um, although we haven't modified our capital improvement budget and it's not before you this evening, the consensus is we pretty much need to wait until the public safety building comes back from bid before we prioritize our remaining capital improvement projects. There is money left in there, but the prioritization of those projects is up to this council and the redevelopment agency board. But since there is a possibility that the funds would be available to construct the skate park, we wanted to look at any alternative. This is an alternative that um, is only a viable project if we apply for the construction at the 4th Street location because this grant money is only for development of new parks. So that's the goal of it, is to increase your park and your um, open space for, for your community. The criteria is discussed in this report, and you can see that it would garner us more points um, because we've done so much work on our skate parks, because we've done the study, because we have the signatures from the kids who are interested in it because Daniel's had so many presentations, he did a survey when he first came on board. All of that community participation will garner us points, and we felt it was a viable grant application. Again, it may not be necessary, because when the public safety building costs come back, there could be plenty of money that you want to move forward with um, your skate park. That isn't going to change. The only time that would be brought back before you is if there is no money on the tennis court location and the grant application is successful, you would end up having um, a, a project of about $800,000 with no match requirement and it would be at the um, 4th Street location. So it's kind of a, a um, fail safe, if you will. It's a, a possibility for us to get funding if other, other funding sources fall through. Um, the only negative side to this, I will tell you, is the um, application um, is due very soon. The um, cost to complete the application would be hourly and it would not exceed $7,000. That um, amount is an estimate of the hours it would take to compile the, report, the grant application and get it submitted to the state in a timely manner. So if you choose to move forward with this project and adopt this resolution that's before you, you would essentially be committing a maximum amount of up to $7,000 through your RDA to fund the grant application. So those are things to be considered tonight when you make your decision on whether or not you want to file this application. It's a viable application. It's a, it's a safeguard, if you will, in case the um, current proposed and approved project doesn't go through because of lack of funding. It's an alternative for us. Um, as you recall, the reason we, we chose to really um, not look at this site anymore was because of the huge cost to develop the restrooms and the, the, 
the parking and the street, that would be included in this grant. So the, all of that infrastructure would then be included in the proposal that would be funded if it was awarded through the state. A couple of other things just on the side. You know, we've applied for um, grant money through the state of California before. Um, some of the projects are still hanging out there that the state hasn't approved any of their, their grants. Um, the most recent one that we approved through the resource agency, the state resource agency, they, um, for our Alamo Trails project, it is coming up for review and they are visiting us in a field review, so that's a good sign. Um, but my point is timing issues. Um, if the funds are there for the RDA project to be built at, at the tennis courts, then you, know, you shouldn't and you wouldn't um, necessarily have to hold up to wait for the approval of this application. So the application can always be um, um, postponed um, for the following year, for following funding. So you're not limiting yourself to only this location if you approve this application. You can still move forward if the funds are available at your um, tennis court. And all you be out is the application fee. And that's a maximum not to exceed $7,000. Okay, council, can you have comments? Move for adoption of resolution 1014. And second. It's been moved and seconded. I feel as though it's a safety net. It sounds as though it is. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's a roll call. I'm sorry. Thanks. Roll call vote, please. Bianca Padilla? Yes. David Bradshaw? Yes. Richard Layton? Yes. Jerry Gibson? Yes. Yes. 